Good morning, caravanners. Just thought we'd take the opportunity to come up and have a camp. Lake Munijup. Beautiful spot. As you can see now, beautiful morning. Very peaceful spot. Swans are on the lake. Very quiet, pleasant place to be. We had to sneak up here midweek just so we can beat John Costa who might have done a run up on the weekend as we've got the spot he likes to have. But as you can see, lovely spot. The magpies are, are taking over the campsite as well. Very peaceful. But what I thought I would do, I would take the opportunity while we've got the awning out to talk about anti-flappers and de-flappers. We get a lot of people coming into the shop uh, not knowing 100% what they do and how they work. Now, also with the names of anti-flaps and de-flaps, uh, people are not really sure. Helen has to learn how to place your aids in the shop, trying to work out what, what they're talking about. So if you want to step under the awning with me, I'm going to do a bit of a run through. Now, I'm just going to sneak down this neck of the woods, down this end. This is what's currently known as a de-flapper. Now, the average bear, this is what they'll be using on their awning. When the awning is out, what the idea of this is, this comes up, grips the awning. I'm going to stand on this little step here. If I was a camera, I wouldn't have to. I could reach up there quite easily, but I'm only a mere mortal at six foot. So that normally straps around the bar, that clamps onto the awning. You then pull the Velcro tight, which then pulls the roof down tight to that bar there. Now that takes a bit of the flap out. Now that's what's called a D-flap. You'd normally put one of those either end. And that usually takes a fair bit of flap out. On a really windy day in windy conditions, these do pull out every now and then. So some people will put two. They'll put one there and one there. Now, the other bar we use is called the anti-flap system. Now I'm just going to go up to the other end and show you an anti-flap system. Now, how these work. It's one solid bar with a joiner in the middle. That bar goes up, grabs the whole awning. So that awning is now attached to that bar. Now, what we also have, we have what's called a sail track underneath that bar. Now, when the wind comes in from this direction or the other direction, I can slide in what's called a shade wall. The shade wall just slides into that track. We've now joined the roof and that shade wall together. If we were just using the D-flap system, we would have to Velcro strap these straps around the bar that you've hooked the D-flapper onto, which gives you a lot of opening at the top. You've still got wind coming in. This system here now has grabbed the awning roof, taken the flap out completely. We can now put in a slide wall, a shade wall, peg down, that just blocks the wind coming through very nicely. By using that system, we then use what's called curved roof rafters. As you can see now, I've got curved roof rafters in place. That has pushed the roof up. With those, grab the roof. Those pushing the roof up, it has taken all the flap out of the awning roof. Now, any awning over about 16 feet, they like to run three of these. So with this awning, we're well above 16 feet. We're up around the 19 to 20 feet. So we've got three curved roof rafters in place. So with those three curved roof rafters in place, and the anti-flap system here as well. We've had some pretty gusty winds up here in the last couple of days, and I can safely say this hasn't moved at all. So it's a very solid way of doing it. What we've also got holding down, you can see I've got a rope hanging down. Now these are a stainless steel clip, which goes over the tube, tied down, that in now is holding that down. So if the wind comes in, acting like a parachute to lift it up, that is holding that down. The other scenario, what we do get on the odd occasion, we might be camped here like we have done before and the wind turns and comes in on the face. We can slide in a shade wall into this track here. Putting that shade wall into this track, pegging that down, is blocking the wind coming in from parachuting, but it's also helping hold that down. So during windy conditions, you tend to be able to leave your awning out longer. Now, if you don't use any of this stuff, if you're just using a couple of D-flappers, you're not holding much down. Middle of the night, the wind picks up, you're laying in bed, all of a sudden you've got flap, flap, flap outside. You're then in a situation, you've got to go out 
2 o'clock in the morning and either put your awning away or start adding stuff to it. So by adding all this stuff to start with, there's something you don't have to worry about at 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean, obviously, if you've got cyclone winds or very strong winds, you'd probably like to have your awning put away. But for most of the time, this system works well. So the other scenario, if you are going to come into the shop looking for some anti-flap bars, before you come into the shop, what you need to do is measure from the side of the caravan to the awning tube. That measurement, there is three different size bars. So that measurement will tell us whether you need shorts, mediums or longs. So before you come into the shop, just make sure you have a little measure, get the measurement, then we'll know which ones you need. But hopefully this has given you a bit more information uh, and make life a little bit easier for you. Thank you. Have a good day.